Hi, applications of maths, additional specialism in paper B, question 11 on Karen's pension. So we're going to go for an Excel question today. And one thing to note straight away for this is the Excel actual marking scheme is wrong for this question. So bear that in mind when we go through it, if you want to follow along. So it says, Karen decides to start saving regularly towards her retirement. She aims to retire from work on her 65th birthday. She wants to estimate how much she needs to save by age 65 to cover the cost of living and retirement. She expects these costs will be payable at the start of each month from her 65th birthday up to her 80th birthday. She estimates her cost to be £1,500 at age 65 and will increase every month with inflation at an effective rate of 2.5% per year. She also expects that she'll be able to earn an effective rate of interest of 4% per year on her savings during her retirement. So we have to open the pension fund worksheet and complete the relevant formula to show that she must save 243960 by her 65th birthday to cover the expected cost of living in retirement. So here is a copy of the spreadsheet. You'll notice I've already put the inflation rate in here and the interest rate in here. So first thing we need to do is work out, well, time from age 65 to 80 in months. So we could work that out ourselves or use a calculator. So 15 years times 12 is 180. So we can type in there 180 because that's how many months. Now the inflation rate per month, well that is equal to inflation rate per year. So dollar C dollar four, and it's one plus that number because we need to do 1.0. So in brackets, one plus dollar C dollar four. And we need a power. So per month power one over 12. And then at the end, we need to take away the one again to get it back to the percent, so minus one. And we get an answer of 0 0.206. Dollar C, dollar five. We're going to reference that cell. So it's one plus dollar C, dollar five. To turn it into 1.04, 1.04 to the power of a 12, because it's 12 months in a year, and then take away one at the end. And we get 0.327%. So time in age after months. So we've got up to 180 of these to do. So 0, 1, 2, we can highlight that, and we can just drag down till we get to 180. Just keep going all the way down. That box in the right-hand corner. Five to go, one, two, three, four, five, and we get to 180 months. So we've extended that table back to the top. So in the cost of living box, we're going to see that that equals round dollar C dollar three, and we're going to times that by, so times, open brackets, and it goes up by inflation per month. So one plus dollar F dollar four, it goes up by that per month, so to the power of, now we want the month to change every time, so we've already got a cell for months, it's B 10, 11, 12, so to the power of B 10, and that means that for month zero, it'll be 1500, month one, to the power one, month two, to the power two, and so on, and then we want to tell it, we want two decimal places, so comma two, and we can press equals, and we get an answer of 1500. Present value at age 65, that equals C10, but present value is divided instead of times, so divided by one plus, and we want the percent, well, interest rate per month. How much does our money went up per month? So one plus dollar C, dollar, dollar F, dollar five, and then to the power of the months, which is B10. Press equals. Okay, so we can now copy and paste these down. So we can just highlight them. And we can go to a box or right track and copy, but I'll just go to a box and pull it down. Because I know that's what you'd probably do. 180. And it fills it in for us. So how much does she require? Well, that equals the sum of this one all the way down. And we can drag down or use the formula, type it in. But I'll just drag for you so you can see to this one. Close my bracket, press equals, and we get an answer of 243959.32. Going back to the question, 
So we'll save approximately 243960. 243959.32 is approximately 243960. So we have completed it. Okay, Karen just celebrated her 20th birthday and her monthly salary is 2600, which is constant and paid to at the start of each month. She plans to make regular level contributions to her savings directly from her salary in order to meet expected cost of living and retirement. She decides to make these contributions immediately when her salary is received every month between now and age 65. Karen expects to earn an effective rate of interest of 5% per year on her savings before retirement. Use the savings account worksheet to calculate what proportion of her salary she must save each month to make her expected lived cost of living in retirement. So let's go back to the spreadsheet. So savings account is this one. So we've got some boxes filled in already. Time until retirement in months. So she's just completed her 20th birthday and it's up to 65. So that's 45 years times 12 months, which is 540. So we can type in 540 in here. Interest rate per month. Well, that equals the interest rate per year. So dollar C, dollar four. And remember it's one plus that. One plus dollar C, dollar four to the power of one over 12 minus one. And we get an answer of 0.47%. Same as required at age 65. Well, we know that, what that already equals. We're going to type it in. I'll just go back to here and press that and press equals, and it will automatically copy it over for us. So we're trying to work out how much she needs to save to make this number. So we're going to have to use a go seek for this. So I'm going to put a random number in here. Let's say 200 to start with. We don't know, but we'll just say 200. We'll work out the contributions later. So let's put our months in. We've got time after age zero, 20 months, zero, one, two. We're going to copy that down. It's 540, which is huge. But let's just go. Almost there. Almost there. And we're going to stop, not at 540, but at 539. And that will give us 540 months. Okay, so we've copied that in. Contributions to savings. That never changes. So we're going to just say that references dollar C dollar five, and it always references that. So we'll just keep that and copy that all the way down. All the way down to 539, and that will just fill in for us. Back up to the top. Accumulation at age 65 of contribution. So this is a funny calculation. This is going to be equal to, well, C10. We're going to round it, obviously, so we'll round it C10 times 1 plus the percentage rate per month, so dollar F dollar 4. And it's the power of it is funny. So, so to get the power is very difficult. It's, you need to really think about this one. Imagine she's 20 years old. She's now got the whole 540 months to go. At 20 year old in one month, she's got 539 months to go. And at two months, 538. And three months, 537. So I need to find a way to write that. Well, I know I'm starting with 540. I'm just taking away the number of months. So that equals the time until retirement, which is 540, minus the number of months, which in this case is B10. And then I want that rounded to two decimal places. Close the bracket, press equals, and you'll get an answer. And we then just copy and paste all that down, so that will just change every month. So she'll get less and less each month, which makes sense, right? Because if she puts money in the bank a month before retirement, she's not going to get much interest on it. She's going to get a month's worth. Copying it all the way down to 539, we get it filled in. And then to work out how much total accumulation of contributions to savings, that equals the sum of, and we're starting at this cell, and we're going all the way down to 539. That will give us 540 months. Close the brackets, press equals. Lo and behold, it's not equal to the same as required at age 65. It's too much. So to fix that, we need to do a goal seek. So let's just click this and go data. 
what if analysis goal seek and we're going to change we're going to set that cell to we're just going to type in 243959.32 and what cell do we want to change we want to change our contribution savings of this cell and press equals or ok and we're done it will quickly do the goal seek for you and you'll notice that it changes it to 123.97 has been rounded so contributions to savings as percentage of salary so that equals her contributions to savings dollar c dollar five divided by her salary dollar c dollar three and if we're lucky this is already been set up to be a percentage if not we can change it in a minute but we get 4.77 percent but not on goal seek here so usually when we do the goal seek we then change this final value to two decimal places because it's actually more than two decimal places it's just not showing you it you can see that if you just do this you can it's not been rounded at all but if we were to change that to two decimal places it would change all of these to two decimal places which it isn't at the moment it's just not been rounded it's just not shown it and therefore this number here would change now that might confuse you but it wouldn't actually be wrong for this question because it would change it in such a way that it would still be approximately 243960, which is what the original question said. The SQA are not clear on whether you should round this or not, but just bear in mind, usually you do change this value, but in this case, you would not change any final value because it's meant to be month level payments. So it would always, it would still be 123970 for every single month because there's no adjustment to a final payment. So let's just show you that here. Let me change this to 12397 and you'll see what I mean. We get 123.97. If I press equals now, look at this box here and this will change. It's changed from that to this, but that's still 243960 approximately. So that's fine. So if you did want to do that and do what you do in every single question like this, then do that. But it wouldn't actually make a difference for this question. And the SQA market scheme is not clear whether you should or not. But I think technically speaking, after a little bit of reflection, you really should be having two decimal places. It also doesn't change the answer here. If I put my contributions to savings, this equals will be um, dollar C dollar five divided by dollar c dollar three you can still see it's 4.77 percent so it makes no difference at all but just something to bear in mind when you're looking at this question it looks like the sqa have not really thought about it as deeply as they should have done but it is a specimen paper after all and that's us done part b part c says describe two risks which could result in Karen not having enough savings to cover her costs of retirement so you can say anything reasonable here but a, a simple risk would be what if she lives beyond 80? She's not got enough money. So we could just say she lives beyond 80 years. And this too. So there's lots of things she could say. She could say she could lose her job. She could say her interest isn't as expected. Anything that seems reasonable. I'm just going to say Karen may lose her job and not save as much as expected. And that would be a reasonable one for that mark. Right, let's go and check the market seem to see the differences in these formulas. So, first one was pension fund. If we go to the mark scheme, it says 0.205% and 0.327%, and that's right, that agrees with what we got. Also, we've got 206. But don't worry about that. If we check the cell, if we've got a home, you can see that it's actually 205 and so on. So same with this one, if you just go to home and check, you can see that there is more. Next thing, cell C10 to B190, it mentions A11. There's nothing in A11, it's nonsense, it's B11. So that is a complete and utter mistake on the SQA's part. Um, everything else I think is fine as long as you got that. And you get your, your money, but you need to watch out. But this doesn't agree with the question because the question is approximately, say, 60. So as long as you've got 243959.37, don't lose your head, but it's not 60. It says approximately. Okay, part B. This is where I think we actually made a big mistake. If we go to part B, we get all this filled in. 
and the event tells you to calculate the sum of the monthly contributions, it tells you to go out the sum C10 to C550. And it's D as well, not C. You see? If you add up the contrib contributions to savings, that doesn't tell you the accumulation. So, basically, I've made a complete mistake on this sum in DD. So just watch out for that. I mean, obviously, if you, if you did it the way I did it correctly, you will get 1, 2, 3, 9, 7, and 4.77%, but if you try and follow the SQA, it won't actually work out correctly. Okay, hopefully you found that useful, a little bit of work on Excel, looking at the SQA Higher Applications and Maths question paper that was the specimen paper B question 11 on Karen's savings account. Take care, stay safe, and goodbye.